Hi everyone, my name is Wojtek Pitua. I work in Nordia in the Common Platforms Department. And today I will will be talking about data processing engine. So uh, let me start with a question. Who of you know Spark? Raise your hand. OK. Uh, Flink, MapReduce? OK. So this, this will be the topic, Storm and some other things as well. So let me start with a little story, so how it all started. Uh, after I, have a, I had a year or something like that, a year of experience with Spark, uh, I started wondering, OK, I know Spark, but I have heard about Flink. I have heard about Storm. What's the difference? Why we uh, have all of this? So uh, yeah, we have Spark. We have a MapReduce. We have a Flink. Yep. And we have all the others. This is uh, all the technologies that can be classified as data processing tools that I uh, was able to find. And then I decided to, uh, to write, OK, yeah, the comparison of modern platform for massive data processing. This is, in fact, a title of my master thesis. I spent a year analyzing these tools, uh, more or less, on the weekends, but it still counts. And today, I will tell you the short summary of, of this research. OK? Uh, so back to the slide. It took me three hours to do it, so you better look carefully. Uh, it, here we have like 30, 35 different tools. And here's, uh, let's classify them. So it's a, li a little too big to grasp. So uh, we have. Uh, I have classified it for, in four different categories. The first one is a query platforms. These are the tools where, which exposes to you SQL API, and, but relies on the external execution environment and external storage. Uh, the most common example of this is Apache Hive. Uh, the second category, data warehouses. You have also SQL API. Uh, or something SQL-ish, so no uh, Turing complete, let's say, no fully blown uh, programming language, but you have also internal execution environment and ex internal storage. The example of this, Amazon Redshift or Druid that we have seen on the presentation earlier today. The third category, processing engines. Uh, they are similar to query platforms, but we got a programming API instead of SQL API. So we are, we are able to program in Java or Scala or some other language, and we still have external execution environment and external storage, external to the tool. So here the example is Spark, MapReduce, Flink. And the last category, it is called middleware, but it should be uh, called everything that does not fall into the previous three. Uh, and I have no good definition of this. Uh, so here is uh, some enumeration uh, with the names. Mm. As you can see, the processing engines is the biggest category. We have like 15 of this. And it's still a bit too much to compare. Uh, so I have done uh, some more filtering, and I decided to compare actively maintained and open source, open source projects. And it gave me the nine tools to be compared. We have four uh, in the batch processing, and we have eight in the stream processing. OK, so here is the complete list. Now you probably wonder why some of them are uh, gray. Uh, and here's the explanation. Apache Apex, it is gray because they claim on their website that they unify batch and stream processing. But for me, it is, it's a lie. I couldn't find a single example of doing batch processing with it. So that's why it's gray. Okay? And uh, the gear pump on the below of stream processing is gray because this project is still in the Apache incubator. So it's not yet ready for production use. Okay, and the first, uh, let's say, part of the comparison, the APIs. So you're, from the developer perspective, this is the, fi the first things that matter to you uh, when you want to develop an application. And we can divide the APIs into two categories. 
We got processor-based APIs and, and DSL-based APIs. Processor-based, it is something like that. We got uh, uh, some base class uh, uh, exposed uh, uh, via the API that we inherit from, and then we implement some, uh, some method. It can be called execute or something in which we do a processing. Uh, so this class is a processor. It can be called different because in Storm, this example is from Storm, and it is called Bolt in Storm. But the idea is the same in different, different engines. And after we have defined the processors, the concrete classes that do some computations, we then compose them into the topology. It is also from Storm, and here we are just putting some uh, arrows on the graph between, between different processors. And the other side of the picture is DSL-based API. In DSL-based API, you have uh, one object that represents the data set. It can be RDD for those of you who know Spark, uh, or some other like data frame or data set. And then you execute methods on it, like on a collection. So this is an example of DSL-based API uh, from Spark. Okay, and here is the list. Uh, you can, I will share the link to the slides so you can come back to it. The same applies to all the tables in the presentation. The only important thing here is that uh, MapReduce and SAMSA, they're quite different from all the others because in these two uh, engines, every application is more or less a single processor. So to have uh, multiple stages of data processing, you need, uh, you need to start multiple applications. With MapReduce, you have two processors, but this is still almost, a, almost the same. Uh, OK, the second aspect, languages. So in what language you can program for the different engine? And here is the table. So as you can see, Java is there. It's not going anywhere. And you can use any, any tool available with Java. Uh, some of the tools, Spark, Flink, and GearPump, uh, expose the Scala API, which was a huge, the Spark was a huge, uh, had a huge impact on Scala community. And what's also important, for example, with MapReduce, you have something called Hadoop Streaming, and it has nothing to do with streaming, but it allows you to run any executable code as a step, step of MapReduce job. And second important thing is that Spark gives you the Python and the R API, uh, if you wish, but that's built on top of the Java and Scala ones. Uh, and the third aspect, uh, the type safety of the API. Mm. When you're doing the data processing, it's quite important to know what you're processing, so what kind of data. And here is the example from Storm of non-typesafe API. So you can see here that we have a tuple, that's some object, okay? And we just hope that the zero element of it is a string. If, if it's not, we got a runtime error and we find out on test or on production. It's completely useless for me, okay? And here is an example of typesafe API that we know that our data set contains ints here, so it's visible in a type signature. And after we do an operation, so we add a two to each element, still data set of ints. And if we call the to string of, on every element, it becomes a data set of strings. So it is known to the compiler. Okay, here is the here is the table. MapReduce is type safe Spark, Flink, Kafka streams, Gear Pump, and Apex. The Storm, uh, yeah. Uh, Why well, Gear Pump has both uh, marks there? Because it has two APIs. One of them is type safe, the second one is not. Okay, uh, one more important thing when we are talking about APIs, there are some external projects on top of uh, different engines uh, that you, have, you can see here. It's probably not all of them, but the most uh, popular ones. Uh, we have a cascading that is built on top of the MapReduce. We have Scalding, which is built on top of cascading. So it's a third layer of abstraction. 
we have Apache Beam, which is something uh, quite new, released by Google, and it unifies the API of Spark, Flink, uh, Apex, and, uh, and Google Dataflow. Uh, and there is a crunch. It's similar to Beam, but a, a bit older. OK, now the, the second category of aspects, or maybe the single aspect, but anyway. Message delivery guarantees. Uh, so you're doing the stream processing. And, and you have to care about uh, how your messages are processed. I will explain it in a bit. But here's a short warning. There is a math problem ahead. It's not a software development problem. problem it's a more computer science problem. And I'm no, no mathematician or scientist. So the guarantees that you can choose, it is or either at least one, at most one, and exactly once. So who of you doesn't know these terms? OK, so everyone is more or less familiar with it. Uh, so it really mad it's, it's really about what happens when something goes wrong, there is a failure, and what happens to the messages is, uh, in case of retries. And there are a few problems with message delivery guarantees. The first one, it is ill-defined. So this is a mathematical problem, more or less, uh, or at least computer science problem. And to talk about it, we have to specify our assumptions very strictly. And if we don't, the discussions get very, very hard. Uh, so there is a lot of papers on these topics. There is a lot of research done, for example, by Kafka team on these topics. And, it's, and when you go to the documentation of each of the engines, they, they're not even cl close to, to the research level. So they are just telling you, OK, we have exactly ones, or, or we don't. And there is no proof, no, no anything. And so you can either trust documentation or try to verify that. But it's also quite hard to verify if their implementation of exactly ones is, in fact, exactly once. So I have done this comparison in my, in my thesis, but I will not show you the result because I don't trust them. That's, uh, that's the case here. OK, deployment. You have your application. You have written it, tested it. Now you want to run it on production. And you have to select the runtime environment. And what are the options? The options here, these are the you will see a table in a, in a second, but in general, you have four options. It is either local uh, instance, the single node cluster, either Yarn, which is a standard resource manager for the Hadoop clusters. Uh, for those of you who don't have a cluster but still want to do data processing, some of the frameworks allows you to run on masses, which is, uh, they call it solve operation system for data centers. And some of the technologies, uh, are uh, packaged with a standalone cluster, so just a set of uh, executables that start uh, some processes on the nodes of the cluster, and it allows you to run the applications on it. And here is the table. So as you can see, all of the technologies exposes the local mode, so it is very useful for testing, and it's a standard, more or less. Uh, and yeah, some of them, most of them support Yarn, the only uh, tool that does not is Storm, but they have done their homework, and the Storm 2.0 is called Twitter Heron. It's not part of Apache Foundation, but it's compatible with the same API, and it can finally run on top of any uh, resource manager you wish. Uh, and the most important par uh, part of this picture is the last line, the Kafka streams, because it's not a framework. It does not require any a cluster to be set up. You can run it anywhere, so uh, Kubernetes, your machine, or just a set of uh, nodes provisioned by hand, because Kafka Stream is a library. It, as long as it can connect to the Kafka cluster and the Zookeeper, it will distribute the work based on it and doesn't require any runtime environment. OK, this, uh, next aspect, the popularity and the maturity of the data. Um, 
I have gathered this information uh, from Stack Overflow, from GitHub, from Jira's uh, of the particular of Apache projects, uh, from Google Trends. I won't show you the all the charts because that's boring. I will just show you one. So this is number of questions from Stack Overflow. And as you can see, there is Spark, the top line. There is long, long, long nothing. There is a map reduce, long, long, long storm. Okay. So the Spark is at least twice as popular as MapReduce and 10, ti 10 times more popular on Stack Overflow than any other processing engines. Okay, here is a chart on uh, maturity. So this data is uh, from, uh, from GitHub and Jira, uh, Jira's uh, mainly. The, you can look at it later, but the one thing I wanted to uh, show you is that Spark is uh, younger. Uh, uh, the Spark is younger than Apache Hadoop, the green bar here. But if you look at the issues created and the issues resolved, it has, oh, I think, a triple of that. So even if the Spark is younger project than uh, MapReduce, in category of the issues resolved and created, it is triple as mature. Okay, now you have your application. You know when you want to run it, but maybe you don't have that great developers, or you're not fun. You don't have fun fighting with open source. So you may be wondering if there is a paid support for your solution. So here's the table. There is no paid support like the big one for, uh, for Samza, for Twitter, Heron, and for Gear, Gear Pump at the moment. There is some kind of the support for uh, Storm because Hortonworks supports it as a past part of their platform. But with all the others, there is, uh, for the Apex, Spark, Flink, and Streams, there is a one concrete company behind each of them. Uh, that can help you. They have the best professionals. Okay, the performance. So you have your application. It's written. You know when you want to deploy it. You have enterprise support or not, whatever. Uh, but how fast it runs? Because when you're, we are doing the processing of massive amount of data, uh, every percentage of performance gives you some real money, gain or loss. Okay, because that's the number of nodes in the cluster you need. And here is what I know about the performance. Spark is fast, MapReduce is slow, everything else is not measured. Uh, I was looking for the, uh, some benchmarks, comparisons, and things like that. So, and there are a few of them. Either outdated, either not automated so they cannot be reproduced, uh, either uh, there is none. Okay. So uh, I have found uh, some benchmarks that covered MapReduce and Spark, and it is more or less uh, they more or less agree that uh, Spark is 2.5 uh, times faster than MapReduce. It's not 10 times. It's not 100 times, as they say on the on their page. It's about two and a half. Uh, and I have reproduced this result on some basic setup, but not something that I can uh, call the full research. Okay. And this is why it is the situation doing benchmark is really, really hard. Okay. You have to, to, go, to do a good benchmark of data processing tool. You have to scale your cluster because you want to run, know how the different engine behaves on the one node, on the five nodes, 20 nodes, and 100 nodes. That's important information. But if you're scaling the cluster, you also need to scale your data to be uh, similar to the production one. And even if you do this, you still need to compare a few different applications, few different problems, because each engine may behave differently with different kind of the problem or different kind of the application. And even if you have, let's say, three or five different applications, each of them has to be implemented optimally because then if it's not, the benchmark is useless. And after that, you have to automate the process, so you need to release the benchmark internals, the benchmark implementation, so other people can reproduce the results to make it valuable. Okay? 
And uh, there are also a few uh, different aspects uh, that I have compared. I will not go uh, through them in the detail, but I will mention some of them. So you have different processing models. So you have batch processing and stream processing. But for stream processing, you can have either micro-batching or direct message processing. For example, Storm is a, a direct message processor, and uh, Spark uh, uses mi micro-batching under the hood. There is data windowing, uh, state handling, because we, when you are doing the stream processing, it's quite important how you manage the state, and can you, for example, query it after the computation. Uh, there is dynamic scalability, and if I remember correctly, the Spark is the only engine that allows you uh, Hot, uh, hot rescale. The, without stopping the application, you can uh, change the number of uh, executors dynamically based on the amount of, of bandwidth. Uh, okay, different aspects like SQL support. The important fact is that very recently, I think about a month ago, Kafka Streams has received uh, SQL engine on top of on top of itself. So it's a good news. There is a machine learning support, uh, notebook support, and GPU support. With GPU support, there is also a quite important. So I looked very hard for some out-of-the-box GPU processing support in each of these tools, and there is none. Okay? Uh, Databricks, the company behind Spark, they claim uh, they provide uh, GPU processing on their data platform that is built on top of the Spark. But that's, uh, that's not open sourced, and I uh, wasn't able to verify that. And there are some boring stuff like, like logging, metrics, history server, and licensing. OK, and now the most important part, everything I have told you is meaningless. OK, it's pointless, meaningless, and let me explain why. OK, when you're doing a comparison, you have basically two options. You can either rely on the documentation or on the experience. Okay? And there are lies, there are dumb lies, and there is documentation. If there is documentation for something, for me, it, there is for sure it is lying about something. Okay? So doing a comparison based on documentation is completely not reliable. So experience then, right? So here's some math. You have nine technologies here. You want at least six months. Uh, of hands-on uh, experience with each of them, and it gives you for over over five uh, four years, right? So unless you have a team to do the comparison, and team costs money, you are not able to do it based on the experience. So what I have done, I have done it based on the documentation. Okay, so my comparison is completely unreliable, but who cares? And here is the magic number uh, that you have seen in the in the topic of the presentation. So based on the comparison, I have identified 36 trainary features. What it means is that each feature can be either supported, not supported, or partially supported. And uh, I have calculated the, some numerical measure of it. Then uh, I had a numerical value for popularity and numerical value for maturity. I have put this in the table took the average, normalized, and you can see that Spark is the first one, and the second one is Flink with, uh, and it's 2.32 times better. Yep, that's the number. OK, and here's the summary. You should, because some of you probably came here to find a tutorial for how to choose processing engine, so here's the one. You should always start with none. Uh, why I say so? Because uh, I have like a few years of experience with Spark, around three, I think. And Spark is a terrible software. It's the best, but it's terrible. So if you can process your data without any tool, do it just in your language, you should do it. If you're not, then you have a problem and you need just one of them. Then, if you really need to choose a if you really need to choose, then you should start with Spark because it's most popular. It has the most uh, uh, open source support, more popularity, and so on. Uh, but maybe you, for some reason, don't want Spark. 
you're, you're a hipster, for example. Uh, so for streaming, I would recommend Flink or Kafka streams. For batch, I would recommend Flink or MapReduce. Uh, and that's, that's basically it. Uh, Samza, Storm, Heron, Gearpump, and Apex, these projects are alive. There are people maintaining it. There may be a few people. For Samza, I don't expect it to be more than five. But th they are doing it. So uh, yeah, you can choose any of them if you want. Uh, the Kafka streams is something I really, really like, at least uh, in theory. I have not uh, deployed any production application with it, but it looks very, very nice because it's not a framework. Uh, and yeah, doing comparisons is hard. And there is, if I have time, I hope I have, I have no idea. Uh, I prepared some more subjective summary. So what you will see here in a second is mostly false or inaccurate. It's based on my own opinions, not on data itself. And, but it's short and simple. Okay? So Spark is the most popular, most advanced, first choice for data processing. It is there and it's not going anywhere. Okay? Hadoop MapReduce is old, simple, quite reliable, slow, and verbose. You need a uh, few applications to do multi-stage data processing. Okay, Flink is similar to Spark, almost the same, but it has direct message processing and uh, much uh, richer capabilities when it comes to data windowing uh, and, in general, data pro uh, stream processing. Uh, the important thing here is that Spark is going to have direct message processing in a... Uh, there is a ticket in their Jira for it, so they are working on it. So the micro-batching will be gone uh, sometime soon, or at least will be uh, simultaneously developed. Okay, Apache Storm is a, was a first choice for stream processing before Flink or Spark was there. Now it's losing popularity, and uh, that's obvious. There's a snowball effect for, for Spark. Okay, the API is not so great, and in original version it doesn't work with Yarn, which disqualifies it for most of the environments. Okay, uh, Heron is a newer version of Storm. It can be deployed in a different environments, but it doesn't support Trident API, the DSL-based API for Storm. Uh, Kafka Streams has nice deployment scheme, uh, but it's limited to Kafka, and it's quite new and fancy. Okay, and Apache Apex is good for the authors, not popular, quite sophisticated, but looks over-engineered. Yeah, so they have very blown up uh, documentation, but when it comes to the code, it's too complicated for me. Mm. And there's Samza, simple, tightly coupled with Kafka and Yarn based on properties file, yeah. You will see a lot of them when you're doing some development with, with Samza. And the gear pump is still incubating, and it doesn't look like, uh, to have any killer features. Okay, so uh, thanks you all. Uh, my name was Wojciech Pitua. Here is my Twitter. Here is the slide to, uh, the link to the presentation. Mm, and that's it. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. You said it's uh, good to start with none or maybe with Spark, but you said that Spark is uh, terrible. And uh, why did you say that? I mean, is, is it difficult to set up or what's the no, most problematic uh, with Spark? The biggest problem with Spark is uh, testing, for example. You, know, you can no longer start it as a standard Java application because you have to start it with the provided start script, the Spark submit. Uh, so it, you can you're no longer uh, you can no longer manage how you run your application. It is it, it it's always started with this environment script that Spark is providing you, and you cannot start it without it. So it's no longer a simple jar that can be started, but it requires an infrastructure, and it has a lot of different things, like testing, for example. The, it's not simple. I have one question. 
Yep. Um, so on what criteria have you decided that Spark is, and, and Flink, by the way, is, is type safe? As far as I know, uh, both uh, those frameworks uh, have methods that can uh, throw at runtime. Oh, yeah, th that's totally true. So it was not fully type safe, but the API is type safe ish. So okay. it's better than the Storm. In Storm, you have no, ty no type information, okay? So, yeah, Spark is not perfect in that, in that aspect as well. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Okay, thanks. <laughs>